how to get ready for a transcontinental on the cheap and fast. I got ready all of this in three weeks. Uh, the bike was torn down to the frame and I didn't have any of the frame bags. So, okay. First thing, clothes. Uh, I had everything I have on me. This is kurachas. They're made out of foam rubber and a uh, piece of rope. So you can't really break them. If something breaks on the rubber, you can just make a new hole. If uh, the rope breaks, you can just tie it together and you're good to go. So by the way, how I made this um, settle bag, it's uh, just a dry bag with strands with buckles on them. And that's all you need. Look, tie them around your settle. And uh, well, you make a cross underneath like this and it holds on good. But the first thing is the clothes, which I keep in this bag. So let's check it out. I like many layers instead of one thick layer because then you have finer control. I have a shirt, a sweater, two scarves, some pants, a pair of socks, and um, thermal pants underneath your primary pants. A skiing mask. It's made out of fleece. Works like this. By the way, uh, these bags, you can make them out of Tyvek. Tyvek is like a construction material and uh, it could be metalized on the inside if you can get a hold of that or you can just buy the regular one. It's really light, like it weighs nothing, and um, and it's super strong. By the way, this is to get you ready for two seasons. This is another hack to get your feet warm and dry during the rain. It's uh, just uh, these diving shoes. It's like socks with a sole. Uh, they're totally dry and they're flexible and if you like soft soles like I do, they're perfect. And then the next thing up is a sleeping pad. And not just a regular sleeping pad, but one sewn together and made from metalized Tyvek on one side, a regular Tyvek on the other side, and aerogel. Like two layers of this, two pads like these, work in, uh, you can fall asleep in your tent at minus 20 degrees and the tent would have to be just a summer tent. So the next thing up is a phone holder. Just a regular phone holder. It's easy. I bought one like this but in the beginning, but it didn't work so well because you know, you know, phones are more or less oh, totally water resistant. You can dive and swim with them. So even if it rains, it's much easier and comfortable to keep your phone on a phone holder like this. Easy to get on, easy to get off. Oh, okay, as you see, I have a full frame bag. I had to sew it myself and you could do it yourself as well. You could do it with a regular sewing machine or you could do it by hand. So let's look what's inside of it. It opens from the other side. So let's turn the bike around. What? Water resistant zip in here, and inside a full frame bag, I have mostly kit for fixing stuff if something goes uh, bad and if something breaks. So, first thing up is a kit to mend your tires. If you get a puncture, you get your tires off your rim. Um, some chain lube, you need to do lube it more or less daily, as I've noticed. A uh, piece of cotton fabric to clean your chain before you lube it and after you lube it. Some uh, quick links if you were chain brakes, then a pump, some gloves, this little baggie. So what's in the baggie? A piece of string and the two needles to sew something together if you do need to do that some, at some point. Uh, a piece of aluminum tube uh, in case your tent poles broke, break or well, well, many other uses. Some zip ties, some foam rubber. For example, if you were have an injury and if your skin is rubbing against something like uh, like fingers and between your fingers if you get an injury then you can put this uh, or in, in, inside your boots and uh, it, it'll be a soft material which will keep you going. Then I have two bags, just regular old bags. By the way, how you can pack up your bags is interesting. Look, you take a good old regular bag and uh, you do it once like this, once like that. Once like this, once like that, then you roll it up like this, roll it up, and they then tie a knot right here, and it is packed. No air almost. Good. So next up, a mirror. It's one of those inventions of humanity that you cannot imagine living without one. Then I have a hook. Haven't found a use for it, but it's, well, maybe, maybe it's overpacking, so I mean, Judge for yourself, take it or not. Then I have a piece of, of sole rubber. Um, you could, uh, for example, if you would need to tie something around here, and, and the thing which goes around is too big, for example, then you could put this around so that it would add extra two millimeters, oh. or any other use you might think of. Then I have a piece of aluminum. Then I have a, just a piece of cotton, which is uh, soaked with um, wax. It's good if you want to, it's a fire starter. Uh, you take a piece of it, you light it up, it 
Um, it, it burns like a candle for a while and it can light up your tender uh, even if it rains, even if the tender is wet, it uh, burns for long enough to get it dry and to get it going and you'll get a fire. So it weighs almost nothing for the thing it does and you can use it multiple times. Like this could last weeks. Good. So the next thing up is many ropes. Like uh, each of these it should hold your own body weight at least. And uh, you know, yeah, I have a rope for my tent, a rope for if I would need to dry something. For example, in that dry bag I had there before, uh, you could uh, use these ropes, tie something around it, and while you're riding, you could dry your clothes. So in, in the side of that, so that it would be easier to do exactly what I just described, I have some buckles, just regular buckles. And by the way, I think about these buckles is that uh, you can buy the regular ones at the uh, sewing store and you can buy the good ones at uh, like hiking stores and do buy those at hiking stores. Although they are more expensive, they're worth it and you can check how good any of these buckles are and uh, these kind of buckles as well. You know, check them, try to tear them apart. If you can, then they're bad. If you can't, then they're good. Okay, so that's with the road. That's about the ropes. And then I have a... Uh, piece of chain and at the back here I have this um, well, well I mean you need a bike lock and my system is to use this lock um, in conjunction with this chain so I can loop it around like that uh, that goes inside of those and you can loop this around somewhere else and then uh, somebody would have to break your break the bike to get it open and I mean you're on a bike packing trip and staying long enough anywhere for that to happen so you will be good then the next thing I have is something relating to health and uh, and cleanliness. So what do you have? So what do I have here? Some soap. Once in a couple of days you will need to clean your clothes. So some razor blades. Razors, by the way, are a useful a useful thing to carry around as well. Some uh, talcum powder, baby powder. Uh, if you get a rash, if you if your skin rubs somewhere against something, if you want to keep your boots dry. I'm not really wearing boots which could uh, get wet, but if they do, then um, then take this along with you. Then, uh, well, this is certainly too much, but it's creatine. It um, helps your muscles to uh, regenerate faster. So that's a thing you might consider. Then another hack I've found is uh, this kinesia tape. Um, well, it's, it's, it's basically like skin over your skin, a skin protector. Um, and how it works is, uh, for example, if, if you're on a hiking trip, then your feet will get, if you're walking with boots, uh, the skin will get rubbed and you will get a hot spot. And after that, you will get like a blister and that's no good. And on a uh, bikepacking trip, you will ride for a long while. And for bikepacking trips, I saw they have like these soft um, underpants and then you have this gel, which basically acts like a glue to glue those underpants to your skin. But no need. No need, you can just get like, like a pad like this, just a regular foam pad. You can um, put it above your underpants and uh, over your skin. You can attach this. And by the way, another, um, an, another point about that is that um, there are two kinds of this kinesio tape. And there's the good one and there's the bad one. And this is the good one. And how do they differ? Is, um, by the way, this is this army knife. I never leave my house without one. It has gotten me out of... So many situations, like, I, 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 it, it gets me out of many situations almost daily. This kinesio tape, how does it differ? Which one should you get? You should get the one which stretches a bit. Like, it's stretchy, you see? It's easier to glue on. It uh, follows your curves of the skin much better. And uh, due to that, it holds on for much longer. Uh, like, you see? So, get this one. And when you do glue it on, you have to follow where does your skin stretch. At that point, you need to um, put the stretchy part, and at the points where it doesn't stretch, you need to put the part which doesn't stretch. Yeah? Then it will hold on for days. Good. Next thing up, some dental string. So what do I have in my health kit? In my health kit, I have a moisturizer. Works both on your skin and on your lips. This is lip balm. Bomb, the lip bomb, lip bomb. Anyway, some piece of regular cotton might come in handy. Painkiller, the regular kind, ibumitin, and uh, the strong painkillers, the ones which uh, uh, can allow you to uh, carry on if even you have a um, cramp in your muscles. So, you know, if it's a real race, you, I suggest you take this along with you as well. Uh, some more of ibumitin, 
But, but by the way, I, I never use spin coders myself. I never have. I don't know why I carry them around. Um, but if you do, and a lot of people do, then take the strong stuff as well. By the way, the strong stuff is called... Uh, so another thing not to get the cramps is to get magnesium powder. Magnesium powder um, is the stuff which uh, helps your muscles as well to regenerate and get water in and out. Some uh, paracetamol, in case you get a bit sick. Some uh, one gave this to me a long time ago. It's aspirin with paracetamol and caffeine. Good for bikepacking races. And the last thing from this bag is uh, some chlorine. Some chlorine tablets if you are in a pickle and there's no water around, only a dirty puddle, so you can disinfect your dirty puddle and have some water. And then some dental things, which of course is a toothbrush, a toothpaste. You can refill these, just put this one in the mouth, you put another big one uh, in front of it, and you like inhale and it'll expand and the vacuum would pull the uh, toothpaste from the other toothpaste tube inside of this one. So that would work. You can do that. And some, um, of course, if you use them or don't, some uh, dental picks. So that's where I keep my wet tissues. So clean that chain lube off your fingers. And that's where I keep my dry tissues. And that's about it. Oh, right. And a flashlight. Maybe overpacking, maybe not. That's for who. Yeah, so on the other side, one thing I keep, well, I keep my tools inside there. So the main tool is this Swiss Army knife, the thick kind, right? Um, so, uh, double-sided Velcro, like Allen keys, and, and by the way, check that your bike contains uh, only screws which are opened by Allen keys. Uh, scotch tape and electrical tape. Electrical tape because it's more elastic and it can uh, apply more pressure. For example, if you would tear your skin somewhere, then you could use electrical tape just to keep the skin together tighter. Some spare screws. Another tip is to fill all of your holes where you have uh, screws with screws is a drill because you cannot like if you have a situation where you need a drill you cannot go any more basic than this you would have to create a drill by the way check that everything is water resistant and i mean do check it put your bike inside of a shower and spray it all over so that you can see is it good and uh before and, and these are my tent poles which are held on by that double sided velcro i was talking about but, and uh, you see the frame bag is 2D, so beginner friendly. And the zip is, uh, could you come in closer? You see, it's totally waterproof. You could uh, spray water on it and uh, it wouldn't leak. And then by the way, if you are sewing it, then uh, you, you need to glue it on first, but don't glue the part on where the zip goes. Just glue on the sides and then you sew it, right? Two of those stem bags. That's where I carry around my water. Yeah, this is a simple design like uh, strands here, some holes here. Bungee cord and a piece of magnet on the other side here. Um, again, I have a stem bag and inside that stem bag, I have um, my reflective vest. And if you were riding in the night, as I am always, then you surely need it just for your sanity. And the other thing I keep there, besides food sometimes, all the things I need for being waterproof. Besides um, uh, the sliding shoes I was talking about, you also need to waterproof your legs if you're wearing pants and your upper body if you're wearing clothes, right? This is just like a bag, a multi-use bag. Uh, it's light, has a hood, covers your bottom as well. Regular construction, watertight pansy. So inside of this bag, you can keep whatever, but I keep my mask, which, uh, you know, as it turns out, I can just use my scarf like that and it works good, nobody minds. I'll show you my sleeping kit next. Uh, part of the sleeping kit, of course, was uh, the thing, the pad, I, I held there. So let's see what's inside. The first thing is a bivy. What's a bivy? It's basically a sleeping bag you can use without a tent. It's waterproof, and this one is made out of Tyvek as well, the metalized kind. What do I mean by metalized Tyvek? I'll show you. It's the same material, right? Only this has paint on, and the metalized part is this one. So you, you know those emergency blankets they have, and they have a metalized layer as well to reflect your infrared body heat back to you, and this works by the same principle. And Tyvek is a uh, membrane. It lets uh, it doesn't let water inside from the outside, but it lets uh, moisture evaporate from inside out. Air gets inside from outside, and it's kind of cold. But with a pad in the summer, it works wonders. Works good. Super light, super packable. Next thing up is 
Um, the outside of a tent, and by the way, another tip, another hack is if you're riding in the summer, then you don't really need the inside of a tent. The inside of a tent is the part which would have missed Tito net. Well, you know, the inside of a tent, you know those. So you don't need that for most of the time if you're riding in the summer. Uh, you just need the outside, and even more so, if you want to save some weight, you can get rid of some tent poles. Because as the outside is a bit uh, narrower, you can uh, just, you know, untie the end and get rid of one of these. And it'll be a bit shorter, and that's all you need. Tent poles, regular tent poles, a uh, packable sleeping bag. So, um, this is called Travel Pack 1. A pen, for which you would need some paper, um, rubber band, some foil, you could bake a potato with it, right, in a fire, um, a peg, some coffee, or, oh, and inside of it I have super glue, not right, class, have a case, and the extra battery of the sun, and a piece of that metallized Tyvek I was talking about. It's to mend your tent, for example, if you get a hole with a super glue or any other use you might come up with. Good. Right, and, and here you can see an example of using only polyurethane. Uh, this side is done only with polyurethane. In the beginning it was a thin layer, and on top of that a thick layer. And on the other side it's only um, a silicone. I thinned out silicone to layers, uh, then I tested it out uh, under a shower, and it uh, is completely watertight. Uh, and the design was simple as well, like if you think that this uh, rubs and bulges out too much, no, it doesn't, it's fine. You fold it around, there's a bit of Velcro here as well, it attaches like that, and even if the water uh, falls on top of it, it runs down. So inside of there I have uh, uh, USB-C, charge up my phone, two power adapters, you know, get as many amperes for 5 volts as you can get. This is... Um, this is actually for filming in the wind. It stretches over my phone and uh, huge difference in the wind. Huge. Hard wire. A harmonica. Oh, well, a music instrument. Something specific to me like this. Power bank. Some headphones. Um, right, and, and, and besides the headphones, another piece is uh, you saw, for example, you can, um, before, keep your batteries inside one of these. Well, something to get the small screws or small nuts, uh, not to get lost, take one of these bags. You can take your lights like that, and if you're riding in the night, you can turn them on, and that would uh, indicate how wide your um, bike is on the road. And I took a spare battery for this light, because it runs on batteries. I got another one, which is a LED light uh, as well, and uh, this one runs from a USB, micro USB, and uh, it's really bright, and that's the one I keep in the front. And why I suggest that uh, you get one of these which are charged up with a U micro USB because I'm running about and around with one of these, a uh, Dynamo Hub. I suggest you get one of these if you don't want to stay somewhere to charge up your power bank and the phone as fast as it might charge up because you can do that on the road. Well, it's, uh, if, if you want to film, if you don't want to film and it's a pure race, then in that case probably you would, you, you, you would, you would waste your time on the resistance it creates. But resistance is minimal. If you do want to film, and if you do want to get one of these, then, uh, well, you can spoke your rim yourself, but, well, eh, eh, in, in any way you get them, when you get them, then usually it is just alternating current, and you need to get a current converter to, uh, to, 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 to convert the alternating current into usable 5 volts, with which you can charge up your devices. And for that, I have saw that uh, they sell those converters for, like, 200 euros, which is totally not worth it, because you can, can create your own, for four euros about. All you need is a full bridge rectifier, a uh, condenser, and uh, and a voltage converter. 7805 it is called. And it works good. I mean, uh, my phone is 3000 milliamp hours and it uh, and I can charge, I, I can film all day. And um, and at the end of the day, I'll have like 20% left. Uh, so that's really good. Like you can film for like 40 gigabytes of material and at the end of the day you're still good to go with maps. And, 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 and that's with using maps and the internet. So that's about that. I'll show you in another video how exactly you can create one of those. And, and that's about it.